Alex, good morning to you. Good morning, Jim. The game just got a whole lot more interesting, didn't it, with the Eddie Howe factor uh, hanging over this Brighton-Newcastle match like somewhat of a cloud. Yeah, absolutely. When do we expect this to be official? Um, what, what are you hearing at your end, Alex? I don't have any definitive time scale. We broke the news on Talk Sport last night that Eddie Howe has verbally agreed a two and a half year contract, as you say. I think they're just ironing out the minor details now. Uh, the backroom staff that we know that Eddie would like to bring with him from his days at Bournemouth. I wonder if this relegation uh, release clause that put off Unai Emery may be a stumbling block as well, potentially. Uh, basically, the Newcastle owners uh, wanted to insert a, insert a clause into the contract that if Newcastle are relegated at the end of this season which is a possibility whoever comes in then they could change the manager again I think Eddie Howe might be a bit reluctant to sign up for that he wants this as a long-term project as a as a building block and listen I think it's a brave a brave move by Eddie Howe because it's taking him completely out of his comfort zone I spoke to one of his former players a couple of days ago and they said it's a different beast football in the North East. Bournemouth, quite a forgiving fan base. Don't really get on the players or the managers back. He's going to have to go up to Newcastle and hit the ground running, not least because of their precarious position in the Premier League and the run of fixtures they've got coming up between now and the turn of the year aren't particularly kind either. I mean, Eddie Howe kept Bournemouth in the Football League when they were rock bottom and had a 17-point deduction. I think this might just be as big a challenge as that. OK. Um, there's only one question in town, Martin Keown. Eddie Howe, is he the right man for the job? Oof. Well, only time will tell. It's, um, you know, it's a massive opportunity. <laughs> That's insightful. Well, do you know? What chances do you think he's got? When we took him out of, Bour when we took him out of Bournemouth last time he went to Burnley, he lasted five That's minutes. That's true, true. And, that, and I make that argument as well, because so, it's like the Kirby effect, isn't it, when he came out of Charlton? But I'd like fit. to think now he's a, he's, a, he's a totally different animal from that one that went up to Burnley and did and true. Didn't I mean, Martin's got a point. Do, do you well, know, whenever, Simon? Does anybody yeah, know? I know, but that's not an answer, is it? Only time will tell. I mean, every, time will tell everything. Right? But They've the not won line, a game but, this but season. The bottom line is, is Newcastle, their ownership model has made a decision. Right? However they've got to that decision, two and a half weeks, three weeks into their ownership, they've had to deal with owning a football club, the change of management, um, the issues with the team, and now they put their manager in place. Eddie Howe has managed a decent side in Bournemouth. He took him out of the championship. So I really should, don't think he should be wide about a relegation clause, and neither should they want one in there. Because quite frankly, if they were to be relegated because of other people's deeds, and he inherits it, there's enough time for Eddie Howe to fix this, and enough resource for him to be able to fix it in January. You think there is? Well, of course, there's enough 20, time. There's 28 games to go. Crystal Palace changed um, Frank de Boer a similar time with a similar set of points and put Roy Hodgson in and he did a decent job and then he changed it in the January transfer window and away they went, right? Eddie Howe is also a decent fit if they were to get relegated because he's been down there with Bournemouth, knows what the championship looks like and can probably get you back up again. Now, whether he's the ultimate fix, the ownership of Newcastle Looking at the landscape, which might well be an embarrassment of riches, they might have made a bit of a holix of the, of the of the way they handled through the media, which is their choice, Unai Emery. They've alighted upon Eddie Howe, and for them, well done, because they've made their decision. I think he's perfectly capable of keeping Newcastle in this division. Mm. And I think he'll be given the right amount of resource. It'll be interesting to see what his coaching staff looks yeah, like. Yeah, but Simon, Eddie knows it wasn't first choice. It might not have been second choice. It might not have been third choice. So what? Just take you back then. Okay, so you've been in charge of football clubs. Do you not think that there's... Has do, do you not feel that there should be other footballing people that would be put in place first, like directors of football? By who? By Amanda Steverley. But she doesn't have any football knowledge, so how can she employ a director no, of football? No, she doesn't, but she's now picked Eddie Howe. So who are the football people but, that are helping to make decisions? Well, this is the question we've always asked, but the, myself again and Danny kick this around saying, if she's not capable of understanding what a football manager looks like, why is she capable of understanding what a director of football looks like? Because they can, they can mess you about just as much as a football manager can. So somewhere along the line, you have to put your stake down. And a director of football is a really difficult appointment to make. And I make you right. My, my advocation would have been get a director of football in. Who's she going to get the advice to tell her what a director of football looks like? Well, In the same way, who's she going to get the advice to what a football manager looks like? Eddie Howe is a clearer, more concise visibility factor, isn't he? Because you've seen his blueprint. You've seen what he did at Bournemouth. You've seen the way he plays. You've seen what his record looks like. A director of football is a bit subjective, isn't it? It depends upon the club that you've been in. And it yeah. depends what players you've bought and sold and how you work with the board. And you don't know what that looks like until you've got him in the door and then it's too bleeding late. Well, I'll tell you but what, Uno Sammy, Emery no, was no, the choice, wasn't he, until 24 yeah, hours ago? Yeah, yeah. So suddenly, and he was telling uh, everybody that he was going to go yeah. until he decided not to. So, you know, I mean, for me, it does feel like a bit of a gamble 
because and, I, and it's hard to say that because he's had very few resources at Bournemouth he was relatively successful over a, it was quite a some story but that last season the way it capitulated the way mm. that Bournemouth fell away that troubled me whether or not he needed a breather True. he needed to come out of the game so this is a big moment but there's always an element of gamble with every management now we, we, what you can never do is like crossing the road you can minimise the risk but there's never a guarantee that some motorcycle won't come around the corner under a mile now and run you over there's no guarantee that Antonio Conte hasn't busted hasn't come in for 15 million quid worth of wages like our boy Ancelotti came to Everton didn't do very much and buggered off leaving them with a load of players that they don't want anymore there's less of a risk with Conte but somewhere along the line, Newcastle have got to accept where they currently are in the world. Where they are is this huge bag of riches that someone's going to get the benefit of. Right now, yeah. they are a sow's ear that will become a silk purse. And someone's got to make that metamorphosis for them. Jim White and Simon Jordan. Monday to Thursday morning, 10 till 1. On AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.